In this video, I want to talk about how the Wolfram Physics Project, which I view as incredibly exciting and groundbreaking, will be reconciled with Chris Langan's Cognitive Theoretic Model of the Universe, or CTMU for short, and produce a synthesis which I think will allow for a grand unified theory of physics and a model for complexity not only in fundamental physics, but which can be generalized and mapped to any formal domain or discipline. So bringing together these two models, one of Wolfram's Theory of Everything and Jonathan Gorard's his associate's research in applied compositionality, which bears on you know, computation and the emergence of complex systems with the CTMU, we can embed classical physics, quantum physics, and general relativity into one model which both describes the universe accurately and finally unites all of the fundamental forces of nature. And I want to actually at some point to have a long form conversation with Jonathan Gorard and Stephen Wolfram and discuss how this can be achieved because it is of you know, supreme importance. Wolfram's model, for those unacquainted, says that the universe is atomized and has these structures called spatial hypergraphs, which describe all processes and relations between quanta and the universe, which then allow for large scale coherent behavior and the emergence of complex systems. So essentially, there are rules which apply to you know, transformations of the whole hypergraph, and that's how things can be can be related and can have large-scale behavior, like how water all has the same properties when I, when I drink it, it has the same flow rate, same density, etc. So in Wolfram's model, both space and time are discrete. The fundamental geometry of space is essentially all of these nodes rotating around a point like, sing a point like singularity, seemingly close to falling apart at any moment. This fragile geometry, which is then re-quantizing at every moment is re-quantizing at every moment, so it's a, and that's really important. So these relations, the spatial hypergraphs, have rules which update the whole hypergraph, happening at a certain rate of evolution corresponding to time. So time is, in a sense, computationally processing and updating spatial relations in the, wolf, in the overall space-time manifold. And so where time is asynchronous and parallel, the Wolfram model, however, remains a blocked universe and has the same intrinsic deficiencies as you know, classical manifolds. It's a, it's almost because it's purely computational. It's an arbitrary and deterministic model. And consciousness in Wolfram's model, he gets like half of the pictures. But consciousness in the model is that which parses the universe. So the universal hypergraph, which describes all you know known relations in the universe, updates itself to generate a single thread of experience through, for instance, human consciousness. So there's nothing permanent in the universe. Also, is an implication of this. It, because everything is getting rewritten all the time. When I move my hand, I'm actually moving into a different set of atoms. Um, it's, con it's constantly being regenerated, else it would fall apart. It's a very fragile geometry, or, or uh, yeah, so it's a very fragile geometry. It's the, the manifold is always, you know, ap appears close to falling apart. And this is a process called conspansion, the constant, you know, rewriting of the of the universe at every instant. And it's the result in the CTMU of reciprocal feedback between the contents of the universe and the medium in which they're embedded, or alternatively, stuff and structure, or in linguistic terms, syntax and semantics, semantics and syntax. So the fundamental di distinction made usually by computational theorists is between stuff and structure. So at, but at the infinity category li limit, the if you take the inception of all of all of existence, every, you know, the entire, the entirety of the universe at that limit, this is an idea Jonathan Gore discussed with Mathematical Metaphysics on their podcast, which you should check out, is at the infinity, infinity category limit, the inception of all existence is functorially equivalent to all potential semantic territory. So the answer to the problem of emergence is that there is a reciprocal feedback between the universal system and its content, which allows it to select from potential somewhat metacomputationally, so it overcomes computational undecidability, it, from a self-differentiated form of all possibilities given the rules of the universe, and is thus able to generate its own rules which parameterize its evolution. So the, so the hypergraph is actually making its own rules. Too. So Gorard said all the syntax, all the causality, etc., that you could ever hope to have should somehow be contained within that infinity category object, which takes everything from zero, from one to infinity. And so, like mathematical metaphysics said in that conversation, to make the Wolfram model work, you actually need one ontology that takes both a top-down and bottom-up approach and creates an automorphism, a structure which gives lattice and structure to itself and is thereby self-creating and self-subsisting. And that necessarily yields only one 
possible ontology, the set of all, you know, possible potentials or certain structures which the universe must inhabit in order to have those properties. So this generalizes the multiverse theory, which is now in vogue among physicists, but it's really incoherent to the metaverse theory of Chris Langen, whereby the universe is actually selecting from a manifold of potentials embedded within its own structure. So the ultimate ontology is being this in relation to God, the personal being at the inception of all existence. And so there are a few updates that to make the Wolfram model actually work in the CCMU. So the problems ultimately, I think, with Wolfram's model are the same problems with Einstein's model, with, you know, a few subtracted because of the kind of ingenious ways that he's, um, that he's done this. So Wolfram's universe actually has an advanced mechanism to parameterize its structure and evolution, which the Einsteinian kind of block universe, as William James put it, this arbitrary and deterministic manifold, doesn't. It seems to be deterministic at base, however, uh, the Wolfram model, because it's, it's purely computational, which is a problem because that amounts to essentially setting prior determinative constraints on the universe. The universe has to set its own constraint and generate its own rules. So in a sense, the universe must have free will, it, pure self-generated freedom, and that has to actually map its way to not only human beings, but to a kind of generic form throughout the universe. The universe is actually creating its own structure. It's self-determining. It's self-determining. Um, and the, and the, that property of the universe maps to all strata. So Wolfram describes himself as an animist, but he doesn't really, I think, grasp the implications of what does it mean that we're in a living universe. Consciousness is not, you know, some emergent phenomenon that hypergraphs make to solve some problems with timelines like it is in Wolfram's model, but consciousness is actually fundamental. We need to return to the Wheeler interpretation of John of quantum mechanics, which shows that the universe is actually given shape and structure by the creation of observer participants within it with God or the universal mind, if you will, at the base substrate of reality, harmonizing all of these perspectives across time to create what would dualistically be termed an objective universe. But as Tyler Goldstein, the author of Sentient Singularity, theory points out that when you take all of these perspectives and they're harmonized across time, it's actually a super subjective universe. It's the, you know, combined externalization of all subjects in the universe, all sentient beings, which means that we, that, se that sentience and sentient beings are really the base substrate of the universe. So we need, so in order to create a true theory of everything, you need to start with the basics. You need to start with perception and cognition and induce your model from that, you know, so Wolfram seems to retain faith kind of in an objective universe, a universe out there independent of observation or of cognition or perception, like a kind of um, Cartesian space, which totally excludes the, the observer, where an advanced kind of idealist approach to objectivity as super subjectivity, I think is more appropriate where perception in the CTMU is actually externalizing internal realities and then these are being harmonized and the universe has to have a mechanism to do all of these things and that is necessarily god uh so wolfram has not grasped the concept i think that the universe is actually experiencing itself and observing and creating itself through human beings uh, that he said that we're you know computationally bounded observers and that's of course true but we are also that we're computational bounded observers and we have the same limitations as the universe and that is true, but we also have the same properties as the universe and that endows the universe with the properties of self-awareness because we are totally contained within the universe. So life and consciousness are not emergent, but they're latent properties of the universe. So they're latent properties of the medium in which living and conscious things are embedded by definition. And so the Wolfram Physics Project can only explain the emergence of complex biological systems, which they think they might have a model to do in the near future, through this paradigm. So reality has to perform operations and descriptions on itself. This is the insight of the CTMU and creates itself. So it bears description as a self-aware, self-configuring, self-generating meta-language. It's, le it's the, the language by which the universe evolves is self-dual to the, to the universe itself. The, so all of these descriptions actually, what are they describing? They're describing a, a, they're describing a universe, and I haven't heard Wolfram say anything along these lines. When perhaps the linguist, the linguistic reducibility is one of the most fundamental properties of the universe. 
So ultimately, I think the metaphysical extension of the Wolfram model, there are a lot of things which he gets really close to, is actually a return to a very classical conception of the universe of Vedanta, Hinduism, and Neoplatonism, for instance. A key insight preserved from the Wolfram Physics Project is that time processes space. So this can be likened to world soul in Neoplatonism, which is contained in and generated and proce processes the 3D substructure we inhabit, which is then threaded by our cognition and perception through time themselves inklings of this non-terminal domain or world soul which inhabits the universe. And it also needs to, the Wolfram model also needs to attach itself to a classical conception of teleology and telos, that there is a purpose to the universe, is the self-identification of God. So God can say, I am that I am. My internal and external structures are identical and perfectly self-subsistent and all of my you know, goals and actions are achieved. It's an overflowing of God's being and goodness from which emanates a, a universe. So God is essentially seeing what it's like not to understand everything, to be a computationally bounded observer participant. God is confusing himself, like I said, to, to understand himself in a richer and deeper way. So it's an expression of Leela in Hinduism. It's the creative play of the divine absolute. This is the fundamental fact of our reality. This is and this is the perspective you need to actually make sense of the rules of the universe or the or why there is a universe at all. You need to couple discrete and continuous manifolds to see the universe through this lens. Uh, an infinity of infinitesimal souls, syntactic operators, which reflect the structure of the syntax of reality, much like Leibniz's monadology. It's infinity collapsing on itself to give the appearance of finitude, 10 to the 400 atoms or whatever Stephen Wolfram said in his, but, so, like mathematical metaphysics says, infinity is not a fiction created within a finitary, finitary universe. Finitude is a fiction created within an infinitary universe. Again, it's, it's, all, it's all divine play. And um, Roger Penrose, a Nobel Prize winning f physicist, actually, he's actually talked about how there's a, there's a lot of good evidence to suggest that we live in an infinite universe. And the... Uh, so again, I'm, I'm really excited by the Wolfram Physics Project, in particular in a computational model which embeds how the universe's laws are actually generated. If we can, because if we can figure out the rules of the universe, then we can finally finish physics and understand complex systems and perhaps ultimate reality itself as our own highest level of identity, that which carries and sustains us throughout all time. So mine is the faith that John Wheeler, like John Wheeler said, that behind it all, behind all of this, behind all of reality, there is an idea so simple, so beautiful, that when we grasp it in a decade, a century, or a millennium, we will all say to each other, how could it have been otherwise? And I'd love to talk to Wolfram and Gora to kind of flesh out this idea in detail, but that idea is in some fundamental sense the light which guides my life and the light which guides all who stumble towards the capital T truth. So let the light shine forth in the darkness and the peace of our Father in heaven be upon you. Like and subscribe. Peace.